Deanna from Memories by Deanna. Today I am going to show you how to manipulate a template that you might have bought off of Etsy or this one in particular is from squidju.com. Um, they come with a lot of layers, everything's customizable. Um, so let's get started. So for this particular flyer I wanted to make it for an event that I had planned for the Little Mermaid. I was teaming up with another uh, local business and we were doing a photo booth and I wanted to promote it on Facebook so I wanted to use this, this pre-made template but I wanted to customize it a little bit so first things first is you have all these different components that are in embedded into the template already. Um, any of these you can move or you could hide if you don't want. For example, you could see right here the telephone number. If I didn't want that, I would just hide it. Or for example, if I wanted to start changing some of this information to my own, I would just... So let's see here it says I'm sorry that's the right one it's this one here your name photography it's it's this um, if I wanted to move it around I could pick it up and move it or let's undo that I'm in the history tab here if I undo that or if I want to change it to my name I would just click on the text tool click in the wording and then we'll just change it to my name. Okay. So you could do that with all this all this information here. Same thing, you just click into it, change it to your information. So let's say we already updated all that information. The second thing that I want to do is add some of my photos into these pre-made boxes here. I'm going to scroll down and I can see right here these shapes right here. The picture masks are, are these boxes here. So you could tell which is which. You know, I could hide it or I could click the moving tool here the move tool and click on each of these and you can see which one's highlighted. See that one? This is the big one. So let's go. I also have some other files open right now. Um, you can see um, to the right each of these different tabs represents a different picture. So as I go through, these are some of the pictures that I took of the Little Mermaid. And so that one's my favorite. So I'm going to do a control A and a control C and that picks up, that copies that whole picture. If I want that to be my main picture here, I already know that this is the picture box, this square, this rectangle. So if I do control V right over that one, then my um, picture is too small. I could move it over. I could press shift and make it bigger. And then if I um, apply that, it'll make it not less pixelated. And then, for example, it's running over right here into the next box. So what I want to do is I'm going to clip that, create a clipping mask right here. What that does is it makes it so the picture only fills in this picture mask that it's over. And I um, here what I did when I did that last step, create a clipping mask, you could see right here it's not clip to this mask and then when I clipped it it made it so it's kind of like a, 
a, sub a subcategory of this picture mask layer. So yeah, I could move this around and it'll still only show me whatever is in that box. So we could keep doing this. Same thing, control A. Um, go to the next box, do control B. I'm going to do the layer clipping mask and then I'm going to move it. This one's actually this box here. If I don't like the size, I could press shift and drag the little arrow up. That'll keep the original size of the photo. Okay, and then when I click out of that tool, It'll ask me if I want to apply. I do. So I've used this one. I used this one. Let's use this one. So that was Control A, Control C. So Control A is Control. It picks up everything all, and then Control C is copy. And then Control B is paste. And then I could do, um, here it's telling me I could do Alt Control G, which would give me that clipping mask if I, so let's try that Alt Control G. And then shift and down to make it a little bigger and move it over. Okay. So, control A, control C, control V, um, alt, control G, I think it was. Nope, that wasn't it. Uh, it was. I'm on the wrong, that's why it didn't work. When it's trying to clip it to the wrong. So I want it to clip there, it was trying to clip to the other one, so let's make that a little bigger. Move that over. Actually, the way that it, that, what it just did told me that I didn't have it locked for the aspect ratio, so if I press shift right now and move it, it'll keep the original ratio. And I'm just going to do the move tool apply. So I did this one, and this is the last one. And so what I'm looking for is, is this box right here. So I'm looking in my layers, I could see that one's clipped here, that one's clipped here, this picture's clipped here, this one doesn't have anything clipped to it, so that's the one, it's this one right here. So I'm gonna do a control V to paste it, move it up, so it was alt, control, G. And I'm just going to shift and drag up to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so I like that. I like um, this one obviously I don't like because of the tail being cut off, but for demonstration purposes it's fine. So, so what I'm going to do here is I don't like how this is red, and so I want to change that color. So what I have to do up here is kind of figure out what are the components of that red piece. Right here, and right here, and then right here. If I press control and click all three of those layers, 
and then right click on my mouse. Actually, it's not letting me. Let me do it one at a time. So, let me try one more time. So, I'm doing control, click, click, right click. It's this blending options. It's not letting me do it for more than one. So, I do have to do it one at a time. So, if you're right clicking, blending options, color over overlay. What I want to do is if I click right here in this white box, it'll let me choose a different color. What I want to do is I want to match it to the blue that's in this box. So when I click, when I hover over any color on my actual template, it'll let me pick that color. And I don't like that one. So, and now it gives me the exact code for that particular color so that I could match it exactly on the other ones. So I'm going to press OK, OK. And then what I'm going to do is click on that, right click, go to color overlay, click on that, and then I'm going to paste it here. So it's the exact same color. And then same thing for here. Right, right click, blending options, color overlay. See it's this circle here. Click in the white. And now I'm going to paste so that it's exactly the same color. OK, OK. All right. So there we have that. So let's say um, here, what if I want to move this picture of the camera up a little bit and write text no cell phone right here. Um, you know what I forgot to show is that when you're making all these changes you only have so much room in the history and then you'll start losing history. Or you'll... S right, so you can't ever go back unless you take a snapshot. So, for example, this is how we started. This is how it was originally. And then here, this shows you what it is now and what layers are are there. So, if I flatten this image right now, if I do Control shift e flattens, and then I take another snapshot, and then you go back in history, the first snapshot is the original, the second snapshot is with uh, layers, the third snapshot is with no layers. If I save this as a, a Photoshop um, file, I'll be able to go back to the layer with, the, with all of the data, so I can make more changes. If I had just flattened it and saved it as a JPEG, I wouldn't be able to go back to this unless I had saved it separately as a Photoshop file. So I wanted to point that out. It's very helpful, especially when you're dealing with these files with a lot of layers or any sort of file where you're doing a lot of changes. You might want to just do snapshots periodically so that you remember, or so you have that memory to go back. So let's go back here. And again, what I was saying was um, if I want to move a component I could always drag, use the um, move tool here. I just need to find that object. So that shape is probably this one because it's by the circle shape. Yep, it's that one. So I have it on the move tool. If I move it up just a smidge like that. And then let's say I want to insert text box. I would just click this tool, T tool right here. I could draw I'm actually going to undo what I just did.
if you move your mouse away from this box you get the the arrow with four pointing arrows and that is a move tool so I can move it up a little bit and here I could center my text it's already set to white and I could just start typing so I'll say no cell phones There we go. There's um, ways that you could change your text to look at, to make it look different. I think I'm going to make that a whole different lesson. So for now, we'll just kind of use that as an example of how to change. So, so now let's say I like everything about this now. So what I could do is do the um, another snapshot and then do Control Shift E. And then I would just do a file save as, I could save it as a Photoshop file, or here I click here and do it as a JPEG file. And that's it. I'm not going to save this one. That was for demonstration only, but I hope that helped you a lot. I look forward to making future videos with you. If you have any questions or if you would like a specific topic, please get in touch with me, and I'm happy to help. If I can, I'm, I'm not an expert, I don't know everything, but I am happy to help and I really enjoy meeting new people and helping you as much as I can. So keep in touch. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Bye.